Hello info person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a somewhat intriguing proposition when it comes to the idea known as the Stellar Engine, or essentially a hypothetical megastructure which would use the resources from a star to generate propulsion in order to move the entire star system. And though this idea has been discussed before, including in some of the videos right here on YouTube, Today we're going to discuss one proposition that's actually just a little bit more intriguing because it does involve mysterious objects we refer to as black widows. And it also involves a new hypothesis in regards to extraterrestrial intelligence referred to as the Stellivore hypothesis. Or basically a hypothesis in regards to advanced civilizations where the civilization becomes so complex that it eventually starts to basically eat its own star. And the consumption of the star in this case is used for both energy and to potentially migrate to a new favorable location somewhere in the galaxy. Thus, Steli War, Eater of Stars, which is actually based on the Dyson Sphere hypothesis, but kind of takes it to a completely new level. And so let's discuss some of these recent studies and recent observations in a little bit more detail. But I guess first let's start with the theory behind Black Widows. Now you can actually learn about these objects in some of the previous videos in the description, but in a nutshell, in the last few decades, researchers discovered these unusual objects, which are in essence pulsars, but are just a little bit too extreme. An extreme in a sense that they're basically eating up their own partner, destroying it in the process. Which is why the first such object was actually called Black Widow. You can see this famous object right here. This is an actual image in the x-rays. And naturally, to explain this, researchers proposed that this had to be a binary system where a newly formed pulsar or a neutron star is very likely orbiting super close to its partner, possibly between 1 and 14 lunar distances, or basically just a few hundred thousand kilometers away from each other, with the pulsar in this case producing so much radiation and so many pulsar winds that it basically starts evaporating its partner. And this evaporation can be visible from very far away, which is exactly what's visible in this image. And well, as of 2024, just over 40 such objects have been discovered and they've now been classified as one of two potential types. They're essentially named after dangerous spiders, black widows and redbacks, with the main difference being their partner. All black widow pulsars seem to have a companion with less than 5% of the solar mass, whereas redback spiders have much larger partners, usually between one tenth and one half of the solar mass. And in the last few years, researchers actually discovered that well, there seems to be a direct correlation between the mass of the partner and the energy produced. Ratback spiders are usually much more luminous in the X-rays because they do have more massive companions. And in one of the previous studies, it's basically been explored and potentially explained as a result of various shock waves interacting with the solar atmosphere when various stellar winds strike the winds from the pulsar and create massive, really hot shock waves which are then visible in the X-rays. And this was actually directly observed inside one of the more famous globular clusters known as Omega Centauri. Each of the objects you see right here, visible in pink, these are basically spider pulsars, either black widows or redbacks. Surprisingly, there are 18 of them just in this cluster alone. And this will be actually important in just a few minutes. But generally, despite unusual features and despite unusual emissions, these objects have always been believed to be more or less well understood. We essentially believe that eventually, this will completely evaporate the object, possibly turn it into some kind of a planet, or maybe even making it disappear almost completely. And previously these objects were probably much more massive as well. So this is definitely a long-term process. But there's always a possibility for some kind of a mystery, or for something we don't understand. And specifically, when you actually look at their emissions, it really looks like they're basically little rockets or little comets in essence moving in a single direction. And this is essentially where this new hypothesis kind of starts. A few years back, a Belgian scientist Clement Vedal proposed an idea known as Stellivor hypothesis. In essence, it was based on a simple premise. The premise that advanced civilizations might not just want to build some kind of a Dyson sphere, but instead might also completely consume their own star because of their energy requirements. And so in some of the previous papers, his goal was to basically determine what kind of techno signatures can we actually discover in order to see if this is actually going on. And in his hypothesis, he basically proposes that initially, these advanced civilizations would mostly consume the star via the process of accretion. But at some point, because the mass here is not unlimited, instead of consuming the star completely, this type of civilization 
might actually initiate its next phase. Now it would use a low-mass companion star as a source of fuel and propulsion instead of a source of energy, and thus to basically reach a new location. Naturally, this could only be possible in a star system with at least two stars, so these would be civilizations inside binary star systems. And it just so happens that these black widows seem to fit the picture pretty well. So basically here we have these spider pulsars that no longer accrete material, but are actually evaporating the partner, which very likely produces propulsion in the process. And so here the thrust is generated by first being stripped from the companion and then accelerated away from the star system. And all of this is essentially driven by these really powerful pulsars. And so in the recent paper, the focus is on trying to explain how this propulsion could actually work and how in theory it's possible to control the binary system and even its motion. So for example here it becomes possible to move in a certain direction and to even steer in a certain direction by timing the radiation and the heating of the layers in a smaller partner with the emissions from the pulsar. And additional acceleration or deceleration could also be controlled with massive magnetic sails around the evaporating star. And so basically, by timing various emissions, in order to heat up layers around the star in a different way, it becomes possible to kind of guide it to a certain location, making this a type of a binary stellar engine. And so in essence, this recent study focuses on exploring this possibility and essentially tries to figure out if there are maybe certain techno signatures we can detect in order to confirm if this is really happening. And additionally, there is another assumption here. The assumption being that if this is true, these spider pulsars are headed somewhere. So they probably have some kind of a star they are trying to approach because that's where they are being guided. And so here by focusing on some of the observations from the Gaia telescope, the main researcher tries to determine 3D motion of the entire system, eventually discovering that there is actually at least one star that might be its potential destination that is going to be reaching in approximately 420 years. But here there is definitely a lot of uncertainty when it comes to the motion, and so this is obviously open to interpretation. But this topic is actually explored in at least several studies, basically trying to figure out where these spider pulsars are headed. Right now there is no conclusive evidence for anything yet, but it is an intriguing proposition, with the study even going as far as to state that these are basically living binary systems. And so in essence we have our payload, which would be the pulsar with approximately 1.8 solar masses, and the propellant in this case is the companion star, usually up to about 0.7 solar masses in mass. And interestingly we even get the efficiency calculations comparing this to other stellar engines, and as you can see from this table, the binary stellar engine is basically one of the best. And so the main question in the study is of course, could this be real? Could these really be extraterrestrial intelligences using stars to move themselves to a different location? And while there is really no answer in this paper, but this presents us with the best and possibly the easiest potential opportunity to try to detect techno signatures. Mostly because here it would be much easier visible, especially if we actually find evidence that something in this case seems to control the thrust of this object, moving it in a certain direction toward some kind of a star. And especially if we actually discover that many of them seem to have destinations, because that would be kind of difficult to explain. But right now these are just propositions and there's just no evidence for anything yet. And so even though spider pulsars seem to present us with the best possible candidate for observing stellar engines, and we actually do have decades of data and a lot of different studies focusing on them already, since this is the first potential suggestion that this could be a type 2 civilization basically moving around the galaxy, no actual observations of techno signatures have been done yet. Although here, I guess let's be a little bit critical as well, because in this particular case it would be kind of difficult to explain why we actually see so many of them inside Omega Centauri. Here a lot of stars are actually really close to each other, and moving from one star to another shouldn't really be that difficult especially for a type 2 civilization, yet for some reason we observe at least 18 known spider pulsars inside this dense region. And if these were basically stellar engines, it might be difficult to explain why. But if these are binary systems that naturally form pulsars where one of the pulsars just started to destroy a star resulting in this, it would make just a little bit more sense. In other words, explaining this using a type 2 civilization might actually be a little bit more challenging. But that just of course my take on this. What do you think? 
Anyway, still a super cool proposition and I think a really cool idea when it comes to a new type of a stellar engine and a new type of a potential civilization that could exist out there, but obviously still a hypothesis. We'll definitely discuss this in some of the future videos once there is maybe some updates or some new discoveries. Until then, check out additional videos on similar topics in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.